Now let's talk about genetics because I think again it'd be fair to say that lots of people have become more aware of the the broad you know what's what happened when we started mapping the you know the genomes but you've got some really interesting uh work that you've done and when you mentioned the geographies of course you mentioned Iceland uh which most biotech companies or pharma companies wouldn't in fact most companies period wouldn't have Iceland on their map tell us a little bit about how you're approaching genetics well Iceland is a is a particularly important place in the field of human genetics uh and the reason it is Simon is that as you know Iceland is an isolated island in the middle of the North Atlantic and for hundreds and even thousands of years there was very little trafficking of trafficking of people on and off the island uh, that created what we call a founder population, uh, and so the, the genetics on the island of Iceland make a very make for a very interesting laboratory to try and understand uh, the genetic conditions that predispose people to disease or to uh, a life of good health, and so um, that has been the the main focus in our human genetics has, has occurred on the island of Iceland uh, through a company that we acquired in 2012 called Decode Genetics. Uh, and so the, the, the beauty of a founder population like that is that if there are rare variants in an individual's uh, uh, genome or gene profile that gives rise to a serious disease, we're more likely to find them there uh, than we will be able to find them in, say, an outbred population like continental Europe or the United States. So it is a prime location for trying to understand uh, genetics uh, and as I said what causes people to be ill and what uh, enables people uh, conversely to live long healthy lives and so uh, we have expanded now well beyond uh, Iceland so we can compare what we've learned about the genetics of, of that uh, isolated uh, population with more uh, diverse populations around the world uh, and through that activity we've um, established ourselves as the world's leader in using human genetics to try to understand disease and how to develop therapies that can prevent or uh, or improve uh, the outcomes for, for people who are uh, suffering from challenging disorders. And can you give us a sense of how important that might be in the pipeline of drug discovery? Is genetics going to be you know, a third of kind of new formulations that you expect to find? What I would say, Simon, is that we do expect it will be very important. And if we look at our pipeline today, something on the order of two thirds of our molecules in our uh, pipeline outside of cancer, we'll talk about uh, that separately if, if you'd like, but outside of cancer, about two thirds of our uh, molecules are, are uh, ones which we believe are genetically validated. So we're pursuing them because we believe we have genetic evidence to suggest that if we perturb the pathway that we're um, uh, intercepting with our therapy, we can have a beneficial outcome on the disease process that we're targeting. And behind all of this is the sense, if I translate it into you know investment speak, is that you as a company are pursuing significantly important unmet medical needs for which I read uh, higher risk but significantly higher rewards it's certainly higher risk when you're uh, trying to innovate and develop first-in-class medicine so what you know when you're developing a first-in-class medicine you can't rely on the data that others have generated through time to show that uh, that the outcome you're intending to achieve is likely to happen so you know we are plowing new fields uh, an example of that simon in cardiovascular disease is a medicine that we're in uh, final stage of development for uh, that lowers something known as LP little a. It turns out that LP little a is another very important risk factor uh, which uh, gives rise to heart disease through the process known as atherosclerosis. And unfortunately, uh, it's a, uh, uh, a protein which is not uh, affected by other drugs that are available today or by diet and lifestyle uh, changes. So if you are born with a high level of LP little a, you are at high risk of heart attack and stroke. And many people who are born with this uh, uh, high level of this protein have them at a very young age in life. So we are developing what will be a first in class medicine. And, and as we've you know, talked about before, Simon, that is a process that takes 10 to 15 years, takes uh, on average more than two and a half billion dollars. And you finish the two and a half billion dollars of investment. And only then do you turn over the card to see whether you've been successful in preventing cardiovascular events by lowering the parameter that you were trying to lower. 
Uh, and that's the risk in, uh, in drug discovery when you're trying to be first. Now, the reward obviously is it has the potential to be a therapy which for the first time in the history of mankind can make a difference and enable people born with this, with this uh, protein uh, challenge to live a full, long, healthy life without the risk of heart attack or stroke. Uh, so the reward is is obviously uh, meaningful if if we're successful in advancing a therapy like that.